We are on the threshold of a new era in our industry, and of course I am referring to the autonomous ship. But where are we today? What is coming? And how will it be dealt with? One of the basic tenets of loss prevention is the lesson to be learned. Let us not repeat the same mistakes. It is an area that I've focused increasing attention on in the last few years and on which I have written articles about in the maritime press. In technical terms, the lesson to be learned is known as a lagging indicator and I'm afraid to say, sadly, the principle is not working. History teaches us that we do not learn from history. One of the ways I used to gauge how well this system was working was during shipboard inspections asking the captains, Captain, have you heard of a ship called the Pasha Balka? I think many in the audience will know the ship, brand new bulk carrier that ran aground in Australia, was written about in all P&I Club's magazines and one of the best incident investigation reports I ever read. But in all my visits, only one captain had ever heard of that particular accident. And sadly, we see the same type of accident repeating around the world. My theory was the system was not working because of different ship type, different flag, different P&I club, different geographical area. However, just this year alone, four accidents have occurred which highlight this trend that the message is not getting through. A grounding on the River Elbe, a grounding on the River Scheldt, collision of warship one, collision of warship two. They confirm my statement, but disprove my reasoning, because same company, same ship type, same geographical area, same flag. And the warships belonged to the same nation. The River Elbe, a 140,000 ton container ship aground, and a ship of exactly the same company a few months later aground on the River Scheldt. And we've all read enough about the collision of the US warships, the USN John Fitzgerald and the John S. McCain. Normally when a company suffers an accident, a serious accident, the message goes out, it's learned very quickly and all steps taken to avoid repetition. There is the example of how it's not working. So as I mentioned, we are on the threshold. And the buzzword that is around now is autonomous. This is going to herald in a new era of shipping and it's going to turn many things on their head. What's going to happen to STCW? What's going to happen to Colregs? Who's going to be responsible for the ship? It's going to keep the lawyers going for years. The designers and the developers, have they considered history? If we go back in time, in the 1960s, it was a time of tremendous uh, changes in society. Starting with space exploration, new words started to appear in our vocabulary. Cosmonaut, astronaut, satellite, We had the heroes of the time, Yuri Gagarin. Let me get the names. John Glenn, Alan Shepard, Neil Armstrong. Even the vehicles that were used came from the Greek, Apollo, Gemini. But when you start something that is totally new, there are also the unexpected come along. Who could have imagined that the Apollo 1 would suffer a fire simply due because it was filled with the most life-supporting gas available, pure oxygen? 
who would have considered that the space shuttle would have shattered re-entering the atmosphere. Not only was space exploration the buzzword at the time, but aviation was undergoing huge change. We had aircraft being designed to take off and land vertically. Supersonic aircraft designed to cross the Atlantic in less than half the time of the current aircraft and yet more passenger aircraft that ca could carry up to 400 people. The problem is when you make things faster and bigger when the accidents happen, the consequences are bigger also. Shipping was not immune from these changes. Containerization developed. When I started my seagoing career, I think the UK flag had 12 container ships in the fleet. Look at it today. The VLCC was developed and large roll-on, roll-off ships. And again, the accidents followed. Shell's Mactra exploded due to static electricity when they're washing the cargo tanks. Who would have imagined that? So the question is, for the autonomous ships, what are the developers thinking of? Are they thinking of the unexpected? Something that perhaps is not happening now quite simply because that type of problem is not around. Are they casting their net wide enough to ask experienced people in the industry if they've got any ideas that perhaps they have not thought about? There is a lot of talk about disruptive technology, but have the same people heard about disruptive regulations, or better said, chicanery regulations? Disruptive personnel and training, and disruptive equipment. I talk about disruptive uh, regulations in chicanery because the regulators are very loath to be ahead of the technology. They tend to lag a little bit behind, to wait and see. And normally it happens that there is an incident before they take that regulation a step further. And it forms a chicane that people are wanting to surge ahead, but they can't do that because they are restricted by the regulation itself. Disruptive personnel, we hear an awful lot about comments and complaints about the competence of the officers on board. I take issue with that statement because what I find is there is a lot of unlocked potential. They only require a little bit of direct assistance on board by someone with the right experience and they will start doing it properly. In fact, if you go onto YouTube, you can see they are sharing all the ideas about how to use this, this yes, depending on the type, etc. So they are using their social media far better than we are as an industry. <clears throat> and we have this situation of slipstreaming, so right now they are surging ahead with technology. The young guys are trying to catch up, l reading about it, learning about it, ready to take it on board. And one day those same guys are going to move into the control rooms to control our ships. Are we prepared for this? But overall, have we learned anything from history? It's a big change coming. We need to start thinking about it hard and fast now. We have just undergone a clear example, and that has been the introduction of Ectis on board the bridges of ships. It has totally overhauled how a bridge is run. Let us not make the same mistake and being a little bit too late in getting ready for the changes to come. So to close on a lighter note, rule two of the col regs will be very complex to deal with for the algorithm writers. And I would like to help with my own set of col regs. Rule number one, don't hit anything. And rule number two, don't let anything hit you. Above all, learn from the mistakes of history. Thank you.